Well, thank you for uh, inviting me here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start with some um, really old images from the late 90s when um, I sort of discovered that, I mean, I discovered the internet, obviously, and, and um, discovered these communities like Active Worlds where um, you could um, meet people, become an avatar, and build stuff. And that was all the things that I was interested in. And, and um, it was great because I, I, this was offering a sort of faster way to becoming a real architect because you could build stuff really quickly and it didn't have to go through the process of commission or whatever. Um, so together with Mildos Manetas, we set up a world for art and architecture and I was like building like crazy. Um, and then of course, the th interesting thing was that I could invite people inside my building and, and even describe it as I was building it. So this was a kind of super interesting abbreviation in the process of, of making buildings. You just like built out your sketchbook. What I found out was that uh, avatars were much harder um, to please than, than regular humans because their attention span was really short. Um, and also I was bored if I had to explain a building in a, on a chat window, it was taking too long and I found out that most people left. So I understood that there was a kind of need for a different type of um, architecture, maybe one that was sort of, you could describe it as, oh, the yellow and pink building and th that was it. You didn't describe anything else, that was enough concept. And then people would also, you know, maybe notice it then. Um, so this was kind of an early lesson in, in building. And of course, it's something that has been discussed a lot in, in um, the history of architecture, like Venturi and Scott Brown, with learning from Las Vegas, spoke about the attention span of the driver. Uh, so when you are driving down a highway, if you see a building that looks like a duck, you might imagine that it sells ducks or whatever. Um, so maybe that's what we kind of needed, the sort of duck for the, for the internet uh, time, because you know, like the information superhighway as we used to call it. Um, and then like in the, around that time, like buildings like this began to appear like um, multi-trillion euro buildings that were kind of designed for that sort of attention, I think, or maybe it was just random, but uh, this generation of architects started producing these, these um, attention-grabbing uh, uh, buildings. And I was wondering like, if it really makes sense to, to um, really spend so much money just to get somebody's attention and to end up like an internet thing. Because things on the internet are, are consumed you know, some, in maybe a week is, is almost like a year in regular time. Uh, so I thought, does it really make sense to, to make, uh, as an architect, these super, super expensive, uh, huge buildings just to make a sort of uh, internet image? And then I thought maybe architecture and the internet is not really that compatible, perhaps. Um, then I, I was invited to this uh, private competition in Geneva uh, and I thought maybe I could try some of those ideas about abbreviation, about how you kind of explain something very quickly um, without, without avoiding the Bilbao thing maybe. So I kind of came up with this idea of, of one click, like a one click gesture that would sort of renovate a building and you didn't really need to explain too much. In this brief, the, the um, organizers were asking us not to make a white cube so I thought, like, why not I'm turn this building into a white cube on the outside? Um, the idea was that the building would sort of disappear, would be so white and so um, that it would, it would have a kind of metaphysical presence in the city because, you know, Geneva, like Lausanne, is kind of gray, beige. So if you make something really white, it kind of erases it. And then I was, at that time, also Amazon introduced the idea of the one-click shopping. So this sort of abbreviated gesture of just like one click, nothing more, uh, was really interesting. And of course the internet kept uh, evolving and then in the early 2000s we made, um, 
we had a kind of little our own community and we we made a world for it um, and I was the architect of the gang let's say so I am um, my job was to make buildings um, for these artists this was a sort of artists collective let's say um, and I thought maybe one and the artists were making things like this this was my Ueda's philosophy in the bedroom a sort of simple web animation uh, a website piece and I thought maybe all I should do here the one click is just to wrap the website around this building that would be abbreviated enough for for internet time um, and it kind of looked like this and because in the first my first experiments with um, with building online ended in tragedy because somebody stopped paying the hosting and we lost everything I thought this time I would I would kind of make these 3D prints out of these buildings. Um, so I would have a, a hard copy that was, let's say, quasi-digital. The step between uh, the original, which was online, and the sort of object I would keep as a, as a ghost or as a memorial would be abbreviated, like 3D printing. I mean, that was really early 3D printing in 2002. It was just white. But it was it made the kind of object that retained something of the digital, let's say. So I kept doing that and, and gradually, I mean, these prints became their own thing. They were not, no longer copies uh, of the internet, it just kind of sort of ended up being its own gesture. It was a, an abbreviation between designing on your screen and then having an object, and I didn't have to have so much in between. And then the internet, kept developing and then social media came along uh, which sort of did away with this idea of you know I mean in the early 2000s we used to have websites and we used to have pages and we used to have all these things and then social media came along and it just offered us a kind of template mm -hmm. that everybody would fill up with their own um, information and you know put in their their friends and and make their sort of page let's say uh, and the idea of template was another sort of way of abbreviating this process of, of making your online uh, home. Um, so just a, a ready-made template that, that everybody fills up with their friends and their holiday pictures. Of course, the idea of template in architecture is, is much older. Corbusier like proposed a domino frame as a sort of template. Uh, where people would just fill up their own type of house in it. Um, and that would be kind of international style. So, yeah, maybe the domino was the Facebook of, of the 20s or something. And that was the only way, of course, that you could produce cities uh, with so many buildings. You needed to have a kind of template just, just to fill in. Just in the way that you need to have a template for all the million of, of billion of uh, Facebook users. If you produce all those pages, it, would, it couldn't exist without a template. So let's say like this was really this, becoming this. Um, you put in, you know, as in a house, you put in your objects and your friends and your activities and stuff. And of course, people want to customize their, their templates and put in their, their kind of special thing up there which is kind of like putting your own duck on a template. You know, you, you combine the idea of the, the template with, with the duck and you, you make your own object, um, which was that kind of slowly trying to, to approach this idea of how you shorten the way you communicate with architecture. Um, maybe just put an emoji on a, on a template and then you kind of get a, a building. So these were ideas, as the internet was developing, I was kind of following in its path, understanding what was going on. Um, of course, the 3D prints break, and, and one of the first ones broke, and I didn't have time to make another one, so I just exhibited it broken. Um, and it was interesting because I was looking back at the online buildings, and they were kind of super dated. So I thought maybe maybe I could propose them as ruins, as, as kind of broken buildings, because really the internet doesn't really age in the way that we understand. Uh, and then make prints out of those. 
Of course, the internet does age in ways that we can understand, like um, Friendster, for example. I found my Friendster page from, must have been 2002 or something, 2003. Um, and I had um, 32 friends, which at that time seemed like enormous. And, and um, so that was template, but no duck in Friendster. They, they hadn't thought of putting a duck there. Um, and then MySpace, of course, and all these places gradually started uh, aging. So like um, sort of dead templates. Or like monuments. At the time, I think I wrote a piece about Pizza Hut being the new international style because it was again a template and this kind of globalized architecture. Um, sort of a, and then of course the way people um, communicate things is is becoming maybe much more abbreviated to the point of abstraction. So you might write something and somebody will reply with an emoji or even a reaction gif for a more complicated um, response. Um, and at that time I started instead of designing the buildings, I would like just find them. So like 3D scan objects and then just add maybe a staircase. Um, because like designing is already a very long process. It needs also to be ab abbreviated. So if you just like find stuff and put them together and make an, like a house, then it's um, much faster. And of course like things kept breaking and it's interesting because the, the broken thing or the ruin seems to um, to resist this idea of abbreviation somehow. Um, you know, a building is new for, for uh, maybe, it used to be new for a year. You would go to the new building and then on the internet, when you see somebody's project, it's new maybe for a week. Uh, so these buildings that take years and years to make become old in, in immediately, but of course a new a ruin is like never new, so maybe that could be um, a solution. Oh. Sorry, my video is not playing, let's see. I mean, of course, it's more fun to build things on the internet because it's like your sketchbook is suddenly a city. Um, but I was curious as to how we can make those um, internet buildings like behave better with time. So both faster and slower. And of course, I was obsessed with this idea of this template or this domino frame as a kind of a placeholder for both like architecture and, and internet. So I'm there in, in Second Life in a place called Sandbox. This was maybe 2007. Um, 
and I'm, I'm trying to teach that building how to, how to collapse. And of course, these communities are, are just like the internet, a bit more exaggerated, because the people are geeks. They used to be, I mean, nobody goes there anymore, but, but they were really geeks, so it was like early adopter weirdos. Um, So I was thinking if, if there is such a thing as an abandoned city, but it must be like MySpace or, or a Friendster. Thank you.